let's get to it. We're going to talk about hypothesis testing. So um, this is, you know, one of the most fun parts of the semester, I think, because, you know, you remember in science class, you had those hypotheses kind of, you know, an educated uh, guess, as they would call it. Well, we're going to make you even more educated for your guesses, all right? So let's, let's peep this. So we got writing hypotheses, okay? There's two different types of hypotheses that you can have. You can either have your null or your alternative hypothesis. So your null hypothesis is always going to have an equal sign in it. There's going to be no change because that's the whole idea of it, saying that there's no change going on. That's why there's always an equal sign. Um, and then you have your alternative hypothesis, which shows that there is some sort of change going on. So the examples there, you have less than, not equal to, or greater than. Um, that's never going to have an equal sign because, like I said, the alternative hypothesis is talking about there being some sort of change. So obviously, if there is a change, you are not going to have a equal sign up in there. So those are your two different types. Um, and then these are the steps that you take to find a um, to complete a hypothesis test. So first you're going to state that null and alternative hypothesis, which I showed you in the last slide how to write those. Then you're going to calculate your test statistic, which will be different based upon if you're talking about a proportion, a mean, all that fun stuff. And then you determine your p-value based upon that test statistic. So these are chronological. You do have to make sure you do them in order. Um, and then lastly, go ahead and make a decision based upon that p-value. So everything's building off of the last one, and basically those are the four main steps that we do for hypothesis tests to kind of go from, you know, you trying to figure out the beginning, like, oh, okay, what are we trying to figure out here, and then um, making that final decision based upon the hypothesis test. So if we go a little bit more in depth into this, um, when we're talking about hypothesis tests for differences, so you know we just talked about hypothesis testing in general, this is gonna be for differences. So that means that, um, remember we talked about uh, two different types of variables, you have your explanatory and your response. So your explanatory is the one that's supposed to explain your response, um, and it's gonna be independent, your response is gonna be dependent, and um, Basically, your null is going to say that there's no effect um, from the explanatory to the response, and the alternative is saying that there is an effect, so no change and then there being a change. Then your test statistic will come out of that, and then your p-value will be de determined from that test statistic, and then after you see the p-value, you're going to make a decision based upon it, um, and your decision is going to be basically, do we think that there's an association between that explanatory variable and that response variable, and that'll be the um, conclusion that you make off of this hypothesis test. So let's do some review questions. So this one says the null and alternative hypotheses are based on statements about what? So we have sample, the population, data, or a test statistic. So go ahead and try to answer this question and then we will review it together. Okay, so we, so good. So let's look at this. So remember, when we no, write our null and alternative hypotheses, we're always gonna either write something that says, so for example, our null is always gonna say something if we're just talking about proportions or means. It's gonna be P equals something or mu equals something. And if you remember, our, um, if we're looking at like symbols, um, if we're talking about symbols for populations, so population mean, is gonna be mu, and then a sample mean is going to be x bar, and then same thing here, but for um, proportions, we're gonna have p and then p hat for a sample proportion. So we're always gonna be wanting to use these symbols here when we're talking about, when we're writing the hypotheses, because we want it to always be about the population, because the main idea is to, you know, we have our population, which is like our umbrella going on here. So we have our population, kind of looks like a, Kind of looks like a, a pie. I'm gonna make it a pie. Just kidding. It's a it's an umbrella. Okay. So here's our population, and um, what's gonna happen here is we're taking samples from the population because we you know it's hard to take data from the entire population. That's the whole point. But we want to make an inference about it. So we're gonna take a bunch of samples here, 
And then the conclusion that we make from those samples is what we're gonna use. So whatever conclusion we make in like that fourth step, we're gonna make a conclusion to make an inference about the population. Um, so basically the idea is that your, alter your hypotheses are about your population. They're saying this is what we're hypothesizing about the population and we're gonna see if we think it's true by taking a bunch of samples. So that's why we're always gonna use these different um, symbols here because we're always gonna be talking about population. So does that make sense why our answer is D? Cool, amazing. All right, let's see. Oops, whoa, okay. Um, the maker of M&M's candy says that the proportion of all plain M&M's that are blue is P equals 0.24. George thinks, George is very young, George thinks that he has purchased M&M's from a bad batch where the proportion of M&M's that are blue is less than 0.24 and gathers sample for the purpose of pr proving this. For Kyle, what is the alternative hypothesis? So try this one out and then we will review it. Good job, absolutely, yeah. So our answer here is going to be B, ha uh -huh. um, I'm so sorry. Okay, so yeah, remember, so like I said, so this is, that's why we're using P here, because P is gonna be our population um, proportion. So that's why we use that symbol, and we're talking about population here, P equals 0.24. Um, but then they're trying to figure out, he says that he thinks that blue is less than 0.24, which is why we're gonna use that less than sign there alligator be eating the, the larger one. So our answer here is gonna be B. So, our, and just for review, our null um, hypothesis would be that it equals 0.24, because that's saying that there's no change. So good job, amen, proud. All right, let's do, oops, let's do another one. Oops, I don't know what I'm doing, okay. Uh, in testing, a new treatment for relief from arthritis pain works better than a similar dose of aspirin. A researcher calculates a test statistic equal to 2.8 and the p-value of 0 0.003. Which of the following is the correct interpretation of the p-value? Um, so the likelihood of obtaining a test statistic of 2.8 or blank. So finish the sentence with one of these options and then let me know what you think the answer is and then we will review it. Okay, so let us look at this. So remember, when we're talking about p-values, um, we're talking about it being a more extreme value because, um, so for example here, this is talking about if it's better. So if we look at like a, um, a curve that we got going on here and you get your p, or your, the like sample that you got was here, your p-value is gonna be the area that's shaded in. So this is saying if it's better than, so it's gonna be like to your right positive. Um, so this is saying the probability of getting this value or one more extreme because it's shading, you're not shading in all this other stuff that had already like 
you know, that's not the probability. This is like basically saying that, did we get this by chance or is, the, you know, is this what we actually wanted? So um, it's saying that the likelihood of obtaining that test statistics, our answer is actually gonna be C because, or any value more extreme. Um, if in fact the null hypothesis is true, which is something we always want to assume, um, we always assume that the null is true. Um, this is like an assumption and then it's 0 0.003. So that's saying that our p-value is that. So you always want to, you know, basically this part here is kind of the, um, like the quote that you kind of want to remember. So any value more extreme and then if in fact the null hypothesis is true. So um, that's the main idea there is that, you know, it's just going to be, so yeah, more extreme, null hypothesis is true. Those are going to be that, yeah. All right, cool. All righty. That was a speedy lesson, sad. But okay, yeah, so our next group review will be on next Thursday, April 19th. We are winding down the semester, RIP, very sad. I know everybody wants statistics to continue for the rest of their lives, but unfortunately it cannot. Actually it can if you want it to, but not in this class. So go ahead and check out the reviews online. And <laughs> I know I feel the same way. Um, <laughs> and thank you for your Penn State email, I appreciate that. If you have any last minute questions, please let me know. If not, you are good to go for that.